Okay, I think it looks like we're about um, ready to get going, uh, Paul. It looks like things have slowed down as far as people joining. So um, we'll just, uh, if you want to go ahead and get started, and um, yeah, I'll just uh, uh, keep on pe putting people through as they come in. Okay. Well, the um, the the situation was laid out in the, uh, the letter that I sent that was uh, posted on the diocesan website, and there is a, a, a web page on the um, on the diocese's Boy uh, Scouts of America bankruptcy page, and um, everything is pretty much laid out there. What is um, not included in that, as far as I can see, is a link to the claims agents um, website, which will give you a form for filing a proof of claim online with them, which is be faster than trying to get it uh, FedEx to the, to the bankruptcy court. And um, I put the link to that in uh, a tiny URL in the chat. So um, if you don't have that available, otherwise this is your opportunity to get that. And I will ask Phyllis to include that also onto the, the webpage for the diocese. Um, so the, the situation is that the Boy Scouts has filed for bankruptcy. Uh, this is including the uh, insurance uh, company that had provided uh, coverage for them against claims and also to sponsors and uh, anybody associated with the Boy Scouts. And um, the expectation is that the plan of reorganization because they're planning on not closing down the Boy Scouts because it's a, it's a chapter 11 reorganization proceeding, um, will, um, that the insurance proceeds will be paid into a fund to be administered to uh, a claims that are filed for basically for sexual abuse that are suffered under anybody under the uh, umbrella of a Boy Scout organization. So um, since um, sponsor parishes of, of the Diocese of New Jersey uh, would have contingent liability for any such claims. So far as I know, there are no such claims anywhere in the diocese for sexual abuse related to the Boy Scouts, but you don't know what's gonna happen in the future. And so therefore, since there is this uh, contingent liability, um, it's appropriate to be able to have a claim filed in the bankruptcy court. And the court has set a deadline of five o'clock on Monday for getting proof of claim filed. So, um, our recommendation is that any parish should buy, that it has any kind of relationship in the past with the Boy Scouts, either as the sponsor of, of a troop or um, as, as, as was often the case, uh, allowing their facilities to be used by a troop that was sponsored by some other nonprofit in their town. Uh, it's appropriate for them to file a claim. Um, it may be that the claim uh, may later be dismissed, but unless you file a claim, you're not going to have any possible recourse through the bank court. And so therefore, as a precaution, it's best to file a proof of claim. And um, so on the diocesan webpage, um, I have uh, posted uh, just yesterday a line by line instructions for filling out a proof of claim, uh, which relates to either the PDF form, which uh, you would have to you know, print out and, and send to the court or uh, preferably to do it online with the claims agent. Um, so, um, and there is a, the, the generic form of proof of claim. Um, there is, which you can get the, um, the, the one that you can file online through the claim agent website. Um, and there is a draft addendum to the proof of claim, which uh, has all kinds of legal boilerplate in it but uh, allows for a description up in the front as to what the relationship is between the parish corporation and um, the Boy Scouts of America generally um, with regard to whatever history you have. Um, it is advisable and, and they like to see if you have any documentation for this, uh, such as any charter, the most recent charter agreement or even a non -re most recent charter agreement with the Boy Scouts. Um, if you have a certificate of insurance from their insurance company, that's useful to include. On the other hand, if you don't have those documents available, and many parishes may not, um, you can say that um, 
you know, documents are being searched for and can be supplied by an amendment later on, which is perfectly fine. Uh, better to file on a timely basis and be able to amend it later on uh, if you are able than to uh, miss the deadline. So that's basically where we stand. And it's, um, it's not a deadline of the diocese is choosing, it's the, the bankruptcy court, but that's uh, what, the, what the, uh, the situation is. Um, questions that have been raised. Um, if the only relationship that a parish has uh, to the Boy Scouts is that there was, uh, for example, an Eagle Scout project done on their property uh, by a lone Boy Scout working basically by himself. Uh, that's not the kind of thing that you have to be concerned about so much that you need to file a claim. Uh, on the other hand, beyond an ongoing relationship uh, with uh, leaders that uh, may not have been the best vetted in the world, uh, or even if they were, um, then, then it would be appropriate to file a claim as a preemptive matter. Um, so that, you know, incidental use is, is not enough to, to require you to go to the effort of filing a claim. Um, if, um, there's another thing that occurred to me. Um, if, if you have nobody in the parish that has any recollection ever of having had any Boy Scouts on the, you know, on, on the church on an ongoing basis, then um, you don't really have a basis for filing a claim and because uh, you really can't make an argument to the court that um, you qualify for, for, for protection. So that's another situation in which you would need, not need to file a claim. Um, other than that, it's, it's a good thing to do. Uh, any other general questions? And so if you want, uh, as we're going into sort of our question and answer phase here, if you can go ahead and um, uh, raise your hand uh, using the raise your hand function in the participants uh, window. That's great. Um, if not, if you can, you know, perhaps just go ahead and raise your hand visually, then uh, I may be able to see some of you. I'll keep on uh, scanning back and forth to look or uh, go ahead and post in the chat. If all else fails, um, you know, go ahead and just speak up when you can and, um, you know, just try to be courteous of other people. So I see that Jenny has her hand raised. So Jenny, why don't you go ahead? Thanks. Um, just a couple of questions. One is just to confirm there's no statute of limitations. So it doesn't matter how far back this goes. Is that right? Generally speaking, yes. Okay. Um, then uh, in our unique case, so I'm sorry, that's a little bit more particular. We discovered that there was a troop and that they've actually merged with another troop in town hosted and sponsored by another church. And that is still active since our troops merger is, is somehow connected to them, is that a concern for us or is it only the years in which the troop was here? And it's got a different name, troop number than the current other in town that, that merged with ours and continues on. Your concern should be for the time that the troop was located you know, or whatever number it had okay. uh, on your premises. Okay. Uh, and you should file with respect to that. And as regards uh, whatever the continuation is uh, in another church, uh, that's not your problem. Totally. Okay. Thanks a lot. Might be theirs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see Michael Moore has his hand raised. Go ahead, Michael. Sorry, I think I might have muted you by mistake. Unmute yourself again. Okay, I'm here. Okay. Uh, the form is five pages long, and all the information uh, we have a troop, and we've had one for a number of years. As far as my research has shown, we haven't had an, any incidences. Uh, when filling out the form, though, uh, they're asking questions that I don't know, that I'm not aware of, that I don't know. How do I get this information? I'm not sure what exactly you're talking about as information they're asking for that you may not know. It says identify the, uh, the first one, part one, identify the claim. What is the, is the current creditor? And then it has TBD, I guess, to be determined, right? Okay. If you go to the line by line instructions of the diocesan website, okay. it says for line one, who is the current creditor, insert the full name of your parish corporation. You are a creditor against the Boy Scouts in case the claim has, it, it should in the future be raised against you. You want to have the Boy Scouts to be able to uh, supply uh, some indemnity for that claim. Okay. 
I I will do that. I didn't. Uh, I forgot about the line by line instructions. Yeah. So that that will answer a lot of questions that may come up. Okay. Um, so uh, you know, if if you have anything further after looking at that, then uh, and I see that uh, Phil has put that up. So that's um, will answer a lot of questions. Okay. I see that there were um, a couple of questions that came up in the chat, which managed not to currently see. Um, <laughs> I can pull there, them. Okay. Got them. Uh, how should we file claims for churches which merged? Uh, you file as your current church, and you, uh, and when you explain the relationship, explain uh, the prior churches that you had merged with and what their relationship was. And the and link then, for online submission of a claim is part of, if you go to the, the link that I put at the beginning of the chat, um, then they, they have a... Uh, a tab there for uh, filing a claim through them. Um, the first, uh, there's a step you have to go first and and register with them, which is a very simple uh, pro and quick process, I'm, I'm told. Um, and then after that, you can file a claim through them online, and that's the best way to get there on to to beat the deadline at five o'clock on Monday. And I believe, Paul, that link is the same one that's up here at the top of this form. Is that right? Uh, yes. Okay. I also did ask Steve um, to post it uh, separately in the section on the website um, that we've, uh, you know, where this is all living, which is, I hope my screen changed. Did my screen just change? Yes, yes. it did. Yeah. So yeah. This, is, this is our own diocesan website section, which you get to the easiest way to get to it is off of the slider up at the top. Uh, it's one of our, uh, you know, our, one of our headers up there. So you click on that, it'll bring you here. Um, and uh, into this information. And then all of the forms that Paul talked about are down here, uh, including those line by line instructions. And sometimes when Steve um, posts updates to the website, they take a little while before they actually show up in browsers. So it could be that he's done it and it's just not showing up for me yet. But um, he did say that he posted those links here on this website as well. Okay. So again, you can either get the link from the beginning of the chat today or from the um, the top of, the, of the, the header for that line by line instruction. Yep. And I see Greg Bazilla also just posted the big long link um, uh, here that takes you, I think, directly there. Um, yeah, the tiny URL is the same thing, but it's much shorter. Right. <laughs> takes you to the same place. Yep. So Anthony Conrad had asked, does this exercise necessarily require the use of an attorney? What's the guidance for best practice on this? It does not necessarily require the use of an attorney. Uh, one of the uh, diocesan chancellors uh, posted recently, uh, I think yesterday, that uh, you don't need to be an attorney to, to, to file a claim. Um, you know, if you use the, the formats that, that we are proposing, um, they are uh, certainly usable. Uh, you are certainly free to uh, uh, get in touch with a bankruptcy attorney and, uh, and take any advice from them, but uh, you don't need to be a bankruptcy attorney to file a claim. Uh, the claim should probably be filed uh, by uh, one of the wardens of your parish, so that there's an officer who is authorized to do things like that on behalf of the parish corporation. Um, but that's, um, I mean, the best practice would be to hire a bankruptcy attorney and pay them $3,000 and, and they will probably tell you pretty much the same thing. Um, but the second best practice is to, to use the, the format that we're recommending here. And I see uh, Peter DeFranco has his hand up. Go ahead, Peter. Paul, when there, when there are multiple churches that merged, um, I guess we just put all those names in the file there then that you're talking about is that correct uh what you should do is file in you know the claim the creditor is going to be the current church and in the addendum you explain you know this church is the successor by merger to you know church a church b church c which had the following uh relationship with the boy scouts and then just one follow-up question um you mentioned that the warden should should file this rather than the uh, rector? It depends upon what your practice is. My, my own recommendation is that uh, financial documents should be signed by wardens rather than by clergy. So um, 
and, and they're perfectly capable by the powers that they have as wardens to do that on behalf of the corporation. If you have an imperial rector that wants to sign everything, then, then let them sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness, Mark McMahon, I see you've got your hand up. Go ahead. Hey, Paul. Um, let's say in our case where we may have had a Boy Scout troop in the 1960s, but nobody has any idea what the number of the troop was or, or anything else. Do we still just go ahead and file it, file it and then without the information that some of that additional information they might be requiring? Um, if you... You know, if you don't have the details on it, um, but you believe that there uh, was a troop relationship at some point, um, then you can file a claim and saying that, you know, you don't know the number of the troop, but, uh, you know, on information and belief, which is the sort of uh, catch-all phrase for, for being able to file something um, where you're not swearing to it in blood. Uh, you say that there was a, a troop that was, that was occupying the space, and so therefore you're filing. Okay. Thank you. And I note that there, there was uh, a list that I that I, I put onto the website of uh, an excerpt from a Boy Scout document of listing all the troops as of a certain date. I don't remember the date was, but it's in there. Um, and um, that lists all the ones that are in New Jersey. Um, there's the first page shows you what the key is for what kind of uh, Troop of Wars or the Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Explorer, or something like that. And these are all the ones that, as of that date, which was uh, 1988, um, were, were active in Episcopal parishes in, in New Jersey. Uh, it covers both the Diocese of New York and the Diocese of New Jersey. But um, that um, seems to be a fairly complete list, and that's from the Boy Scouts themselves. Um, I understand there are probably different lists as of different dates, but, um, you know, I'm not sure that that would be much more helpful to you. Um, the other thing that had been suggested by one of the uh, members of the clergy that had, uh, had posed a question to me is, uh, could they get records from their local council? And the answer is probably yes, but I don't know how quickly they can get you copies of records. But um, uh, I can look up what the, uh, the different Councils. I think there are four of them that cover the diocese of New Jersey, three or four, and um, get, uh, post that onto the uh, have, have see post that onto the web page um, later this evening. I see Paul Van Zant has a question. Why don't you go ahead and Paul? Uh, just just to try to roll this down into the simplest thing. If we go to the top of the instruction page, click on that link, and fill out the link with the answers that are on the guidelines on that you give us, we should be okay as long as we have a charter and an insurance number. Also the addendum, the, um, the, the addendum to the proof of claim. Okay, and it, is the addendum anything special or does that include in your instructions? Well, the if you look at the draft addendum, it has um, sort of a, 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 a place in italics at the top for explaining what the relationship is between your parish and the Boy Scouts. Okay. And, um, you know, you can also at that point make a reference to any other documents you want to include. include. Uh, do bear in mind that um, when you file this online, you're allowed to file your proof of claim in one PDF document so that you should probably attach um, all of those, the, the documentation uh, in PDF format to the addendum so that it's all one PDF file. Okay, because we've got the our copy of our charters coming in and I received the insurance for other purposes just the other day. So okay. uh, we should be okay that way. Thank all right, and I, and I think that the claims agent website explains, you know, what the details are about putting those things together. Okay. And um, again, one of the chancellors mentioned that they are very helpful in answering questions, but um, they're probably gonna have more time to answer questions so, to, to tomorrow than they will on Monday. Okay, thank you. And I saw there was a question from Sally Gordon, if filling out online, how is the signature transferred? And then she also asked about, can a warden be a signature, which you've already answered. Um, I'm not sure what the question is, how the signature transferred. I, I may say I have to go find that.
Okay, looking at the online proof of claim. Um, Okay, signature is uses an electronic signature, um, and, and and there's a little box up in the corner that says "click to sign." Uh, I believe that um, I mean there are a couple of companies that will offer electronic signatures, but um, it's a sign with a digital ID. Um, and uh, if you have a problem tracking down how to get a digital ID. Uh, probably going to have Steve Welch either to put, put in a small uh, addition to the page indicating how to do that for people that don't have one. But if you click on the, that little orange um, flag at the corner, um, it, uh, at least on my computer, it, it opens a little screen that says sign with the digital ID and it um, gives me an option of using one that I've already filed for. Or at the bottom, it says uh, configure a new digital ID, which would uh, probably be for those who have never used one will be able to get you one. And I think that works through um, uh, Adobe, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I would I would say that it does. I've done that on documents before. Um, and Adobe kind of walks you step by step in how to create a, a digital ID if you don't already have one. But do pay attention to the password for it because it's very hard to get it back if you ever lose that. Mm -hmm. Having and done that, there was a couple of folks who had noted that they had been trying to reach uh, the registrars, uh, you know, for a couple of weeks and they're not getting responses. Um, so um, apparently, that's been problematic, I guess, as far as trying to actually get the the uh, information directly from the councils. Um, and then uh, Steve Callista was asking in, it says in part number, but there's no part, oh, part three. Okay, in part three, do we state we are the creditor? Yes, the creditor is the parish corporation. That, that was the um, line one of the proof of claim form. So that's your right, the creditor is you. Great. And that's... At least he's a view of the Boy Scouts of America. Okay. It's me, Phyllis. I just have um, one question. Sure, go ahead, Michael. Um, if for some reason uh, you aren't able to attain some of the documentation you, you need by Monday, should we go ahead and file without the documentation and then uh, try to get it and uh, file again? Uh, by all means, you should file by Monday because if you don't file by Monday, then you won't be able to file at all. Okay. Um, if you can state in, in that explanation at the beginning of the addendum that um, you are uh, in the process of trying to locate documentation. Um, and once you get the documentation, I would uh, you know, hold on to it. As you can say, we're looking for the documentation. We reserve the right to amend the proof of claim uh, once we have it. And uh, that way you can amend it at any time when you, when you have everything that you want to file to put in an amendment. But getting the proof of, original proof of claim filed on time is paramount importance. Okay. Um, one question that was raised by Chancellor is, if you look at the, uh, the links to any of the court papers, you can see that there are actually two debtors, two, two organizations that were filing. One is the Boy Scouts of America, which is the, the general organization. And there's also a Delaware Council. Um, but you don't need to file a claim against the Delaware Council uh, through the vagaries of, of the jurisdiction of the bankruptcy courts, uh, the Boy Scouts had to name a subsidiary corporation uh, that would be located where they were planning on filing the, the, uh, the bankruptcy proceeding. And so that's why that council is there. But they're, they, they're, they have no relationship to any operations in New Jersey. So what you should only be filing is one proof of claim with the Boy Scouts general. And that's, that's set forth in the line-by-line the -line instructions. I see the question in the chat, what happens if you don't file? If you don't file, and if you find at uh, some point down the line that a claim for sexual abuse has been raised against uh, your local Boy Scout troop or former local Boy Scout troop and your parish, then um, you will not have whatever advantage that there may be from being able to get relief through the bankruptcy court 
for any liability that they find against you. You will still have a church insurance company, uh, but again, this is that's that's one arm of support for you, and you want to hang to as many arms of financial support for claims like this that you can. It's not the end of the world, but it's better to, to file than not. And again, if you do file, uh, please notify Phyllis Jones so that she can keep track of what parishes in the diocese have, uh, have, have gone ahead and done this just so that we have a record of it. I see Ralph Richardson has his hand up again. Ralph, why don't you go ahead? Can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me now? You. Yep, I can hear you now. Okay. If you mail it, it has to be postmarked by the deadline, November 16th. How does the mailing work? Uh, that's not going to help you. By mailing it by and postmarking it by that point uh, is not what the, the, the criterion is. It has to be received by the bankruptcy court or the claims agent by 5 o'clock on Monday, which is why I recommend that you file online electronically. Okay. Second, the uh, addendum, the one I got offline has the word draft on it. It's, is there one that can be filled in? And that take off the word draft and make, make changes to it. The draft is indicated it's not a final thing for everybody to use. You have to make your own modifications, particularly in the beginning where it explains what the relationship between your parish and uh, the Boy Scouts is. So take off the word draft and I should be able to use it. Yes. And the last question, the troop relationship that we have with the troop was back in the 50s and the 60s. <clears throat> and I talked to one of the members who was a member of that troop, and he said that the troop was disbanded in 1969, and that was the end of it. Do we still need to file a claim for that troop? Well, because, because of the fact that uh, sexual abuse uh, cases uh, tend to have very long statutes of limitation. Um, you don't know what happened in 1968, and therefore, uh, it certainly uh, a, a, it behooves you to, to file a claim just so that you can have that protection. Okay, because my I understand that part, but I have no documentation of this this troop um, at all. And I heard someone said earlier that the city might have some records of that troop. Um, so on the addendum, I will put searching for documents or something, or how do I come I will take that? a look at the addendum and, and put in um, sort of an optional piece of language to use is that if you don't have any documents, uh, but you expect to have them, that you can be able to put them in later on. And I'll have that up by this evening sometime. Thank you. Great, any other questions? Not seeing any at the moment. I would then, I guess it looks like, looks like we've got everything answered for now. Um, so what we will do is just work on um, getting, uh, making sure that, that uh, the information is up on the website and the revised document gets up on the website. Um, and uh, one other thing I just wanted to add is that once you do get together, whatever you do decide to, um, uh, to file, please also um, send a copy of it to me uh, so that we can have a copy of it at uh, the diocesan level uh, as well. Um, and with that, I would, uh, oh, I see, uh, I thought, Jennifer, did you have a question? Yeah, I do. I didn't know how to put it. Um, about five years ago, we learned that there was a family where abuse took place in the family, not a parishioner, uh, a scout family. And I know they were on the premises at some point. Um, um, should I get specific about, since I can get some details? Um, I, I believe the abuse took place in their home, but I don't really know. So um, it's, a little, it's a little bit tricky. Um, do we just write down what we know, what we do know. Um, 
with the I don't the, I don't think that that's name. necessary for filing a proof of claim. I think what you need to do is just state what the relationship between your parish and the Boy Scouts was. And uh, okay. you know, if if somebody files a claim because of things that happened and and they think that it involves the parish, mm -hmm. then um, you know you may want to hang on to whatever information you have uh, for that case. It, you don't need to tell. The, the bankruptcy court, what possible claims may exist that you don't know all the details for. Okay, thank you. That's that's their job. I mean, there, there's a whole industry of, of personal injury lawyers and bankruptcy lawyers who are uh, looking for sexual abuse victims to represent, um, you know, in in this case and, and in other cases. So um, they, they can find those lawyers. Okay, thank you. Any <clears throat> any questions or clarifications while we're doing filling out the form, and before we jump off the building, uh, who do we call? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Think I think the line by line instructions are pretty much complete. If anybody raises a question about that, uh, you can email me p ambos at amboslaw dot com. Um, probably several places on the diocesan website, but I will uh, put it into the chat now. Okay. And I uh, see Paul Van Zandt has his hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, I was I printed out that addendum to take a look at it. The, in the top line, it asks for three different pieces of information. The creditor is us. The debtor is the Boy Scouts. But it also has claimant. How do we know who the claimant is? It says the addendum is submitted on behalf of the creditor. That's us. And then it says claimant in support of the proof of claim and field against the debtor who is the Boy Scouts of America. Well, is, wasn't that where they did TBD or am I mistaken about that? If you're a, a, an abuse victim, then you're gonna be a claimant. You're not claiming against the, uh, you're not finding a claim against the Boy Scouts, you're, you, well, it's actually a proof of claim. But um, you're you're having a contingent claim, so I don't think the claimant applies to that. But I will look at the documentation and see uh, how that might be relevant. If, if you have anything specific, I'd appreciate it because I'm going to have to call my wardens and get on this for tomorrow. Okay, um, I just put my email address in, into the chat. You can copy that and have that handy if you don't otherwise previously have it. Um, so we. Alrighty. I think Paul or Ralph started to say something, but it looks like he froze up there. The other thing uh, to note also is that we are recording um, this workshop. So we will be posting the recording also on the website in case there was something here that did get discussed, but you forgot what the answer was. You can go back and uh, take a run through. Um, Thank you. And then if you have anybody else that you know of who um, uh, wasn't able to attend perhaps for some reason today and needs information, um, if you could direct them again to that same page on the website that I just showed before um, to the recording and have them go through that, um, then uh, that would be a good first step. And then if they have questions beyond that, then they could, they could contact us. All right, so any other questions? Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Ralph. Okay. Um, I'm getting the feeling that if you don't have everything you need, the opposite thing is to get something in to the uh, court. Correct? That's correct. Well, yes, via the claims agent, yes. And a gentleman asks on the addendum, the, if it says claim it, uh, should that be to be determined? Should that have that part should be filled in since we don't know? The claimant will be the, your parish corporation. Oh, okay. I think, well, I, I, I will clarify that. I will go back and look at it and clarify that and put out a clarification. That'll go right, on so the clarify, you'll put it, it'll be on the diocese website? Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, anybody else? 
Oh, well, thank you very much for joining us on such short notice. Um, it's always easier to uh, have our group questions answered uh, rather than trying to do everything individually. So I really appreciate that. And um, Brian Jemmett, I see you're on the call with us today. And I had tried to give you a little bit of uh, advance warning in the chat there. I was wondering if you might be willing to close us in prayer. Thank you very much. Thank you. God is with you. And also with you. And let us pray. Uh, gracious and ever-living God, we, we thank you for this time together. Thank you for the insight and the information that has been shared and given to those who may need to file claims with the relevant authorities regarding the Boy Scouts of America bankruptcy. We ask that you continue to guard, guide, and protect all of us and those who still have troops, that we may know and trust and believe that your sound presence will continue to lead and guide us. Help us to hear you speaking to us as we seek justice for all concerned and those particularly who have been affected. And may your spirit dwell with us this day and continue in Christ's most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Welcome. Okay.